Previously on Tyranny of Dragons. You cannot see anyone posted at the entrance, or anywhere for that matter. It looks deserted. It doesn't seem like anything is going on here, but we should be on our guard. Is everyone ready? I nod towards Gurmley, gripping my axe tightly. I take a deep breath and ready myself. I would like to take another elixir of time potion to fully restore my magic and possibly get rid of this rhyming curse. Very well, Barak. I shall pass you a note as to what effects the next one has. As you drink from the vial, a strange light forms itself around you, and for the briefest of moments, you vanish in pure white light. Bama? Standing before you all where Bama the Wise stood moments ago is a creature of similar size and wearing almost the exact same attire, the black robes having fallen away the once dark skin of the gnome replaced with black feathers and where two arms once were, now sit a pair of arm-like wings. The blue and green eyes replaced with jet black and where there was once a mouth, now sits a yellow bill. Are you saying what I think you're saying? I believe so. Bama the Wise has turned into a gnome-sized duck. Can you still speak? According to my note, I can only quack as I do not have the capability of English. That's fine, it'll just be like talking to Biden. Hmm? What's going on? Don't worry about it. I look at the new form that is the duck gnome, then to the others. So now he's a duck. At least he'll stop rhyming. Might be even less inconspicuous this way. This just got a whole lot worse. We should probably start making our way in, but before we do, can we see anyone around? Make a perception check. You do not see anyone in view. You do, however, hear a soft meow coming from the side of the mill. Sir fluffs a lot. What? Uh, can I see him? There is no sign of the cat at this point. Darn, oh wait, I have the bell. Joe, what are you talking about? I reach into my cloak and pull out a small bell. Do you think you should maybe let us know what you're doing before you do it? We're right on the edge of a potential trap here. Now nah, it'll be fine. I have a side quest to save the blacksmith's cat. He gave me this bell to call it. I don't think that's a wise idea, but this is you I'm talking to, so it's totally on brand. But given what's just happened to our gnome, Probably not a great idea to be calling a cat over right now. I ring the bell. Nice knowing your character, Barack. The sound of the bell jingles into the quiet night air. A moment later, you spot a pure white tabby emerge from the shadows. It moves along the ground without making a sound. Then it stops dead in its tracks, its eyes reflecting the moonlight as it stares unblinkingly at Bama. Oh, shit. Roll me a constitution saving throw, with disadvantage due to you being a duck. The sight of the cat ahead of you fills you with fear. You want nothing more than to get away from it as it begins to crouch low in an attempt to not be seen by you and recognize the action of one that is preparing to pounce. I begin backing up. Unable to speak in English, I simply say, quack. Can I fly as a duck? You have 30 feet of flying speed, in addition to your walking speed. I take flight and head for the top of the mill. The cat leaps into the air as you pass, but misses you. It begins chasing after you and starts climbing up the side of the mill. We have to stop him. I'm on it. I cast fireball at the cat. Don't hurt Sir Fluffs a lot. Your fireball misses the tabby by a couple of inches and makes contact with the edge of the building, blasting a small piece away. The cat runs into the darkness, hissing slightly. Thank goodness. The noise of the fireball causes a commotion within the building and out pour several kobolds and a couple of hooded figures, one of which spots Swolnald, Gurmly, and Sharpen standing at the entrance. They hurry over to you. What's going on here? I raise a hand in welcome. Greetings, my brothers. We were escorting a prisoner and she attempted to cast some offensive magic but fear not, as I am mighty, and stopped it from causing much damage. I slap Sharpen around the back of the head. Bitch needs to know her place, you know what I mean? Watch it, Donald. Play along, Ben, don't be a pussy. Donald, roll me a deception check. Fuck yeah, let's go. The kobolds have no reason not to believe you and begin walking back towards the mill. The two cultists continue to stand there for a moment. Why did you bring her here? All prisoners were to be taken to Kianrath. We couldn't find him and were nearby. We thought this would be a good place to hold her for now while we regrouped. Roll me another deception check. 
Chinrath is currently in one of the houses near the main stronghold. He is watching the actions of a group that's been getting in our way this night. You can stay here for now, but keep her from causing any more trouble. We can tie her up against that well over there. She won't be causing you any trouble. Excellent, then you can help us with preparations. Preparations for what? We've been having some trouble with a group that arrived into town and took out several of our kobold allies. Mondath believes they will be heading here, no doubt to protect this mill from being burnt down. We need help in setting up vantage points to... Hold on, how do we know that these three aren't that group? I put my hand out, showing all my fingers. Do not question our resolve, brothers. Tiamat will rise and bring down fire and brimstone upon the non-followers, reigning in a new age of darkness. That was some quick thinking, Joe. If I wasn't sitting here seeing and hearing it for myself, I would never have believed that was possible. Roll me a deception check. Oh, did that work? The two cultists bow their heads. Our apologies, brothers, for our doubt. Please enter and tie your prisoner. They step aside to allow you entry. The mill is not overly large. It comprises of a single floor with large barn-like doors at the front. You can see several barrels and crates stacked on the side, a well in the center of the open area outside the building, and a stone wall some 10 feet high surrounding the vicinity. Can we tell what's inside the barrels? Unless you were to inspect them closely, all you can really obtain is a strong odor coming from them. Of what, though, you are unsure. But it is not pleasant. I say quietly to the others as we walk towards the well, something is off in those barrels. One of you should check them out. I could do that seeing as I'm just sitting on my ass at the moment. I take it no one has spotted me yet? At the moment, no. However, if you're planning on moving to get closer to those barrels, I would like a stealth check. You got it. Ah, uh, nice. Okay, so I carefully make my way along the roof of the mill and fly down to the barrels. What can I tell? You can smell that strong odor and notice a leak coming from one of them. A thick liquid slowly drips, amber-colored, onto the ground. Give me a history check. Your vast historical knowledge tells you this is dragon oil, a highly flammable and explosive substance that in small quantities can be used to soak torches in. On a larger scale, it could be used to level a small town. Holy shit. We could use that to our advantage. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but you, where you stand, have no knowledge of what is in the barrels, and unless you have already forgotten, Bama is incapable of human speech right now, so cannot tell you about this. And even if he could, he is currently hiding out of sight from the cultists and kobolds. Okay. Well, I don't necessarily need to tell them about it, do I? I could just set them off myself with a fireball. You could do that, sure. However, if you are too close to these barrels and you use fireball on them, the explosion would cause catastrophic damage to yourself. You would need to roll an exceptionally high dexterity saving throw in order to escape the blast. If you fail this, it will mean the end for you. What if I were flying, say, 30 feet in the air? It would reduce the required number you'd need for a success. Not a bad idea, Barack. I'm glad to see you're using this change to your advantage. Now roll me a dexterity saving throw. I don't mean to do it now. It's not for that. The cat is back about to pounce on you. Oh no, Bama's about to be kidding me. Fuck that. There, tell me I got away. You narrowly avoided the cat from attacking you, flying back up to the roof of the mill. It prowls on the ground, meowing loudly, getting the attention of one of the kobolds that's walking past. It cackles and runs at the cat, brandishing a dagger, but the cat flees back into the dark. The kobold looks disappointed and continues on. For now then, I'll remain still. While this has been happening, we've been tying up Sharpen. I'm gonna leave it loose though, so he can escape easily if shit goes down. I lean into him and say, concentrate on keeping me and white shit from dying and we'll take care of the rest, okay? I give him a nod to show I understand. Come on, let's scope this place out and get an idea of how many of these fucktards are here. I guess we, we could walk over to those barrels to also know what's inside them. You do that while I go inside the mill. I'll find out just how many are in there, and then we can meet back here to check on our prisoner. Very well. While Gurmley is checking the barrels, you, Swole Nald, enter the mill. It is mostly empty except for a few more crates, some stacks of what appear to be food supplies, and a mechanical structure that is used for the large wheel outside. There are nine kobolds inside and the two cultists you saw at the entrance. 
one of which walks up to you, showing his hand. Welcome, brother. You're just in time for the briefing. Come join us. And he gestures you towards the group. The other cultist addresses you all. Brothers of the cult and our kobold allies, tonight has been long and fruitful. We are a step closer towards our goal. The crowd cheers at these words. The cultist raises a hand for silence. But now is not the time for celebration, for we are gathered here for one final mission before we are to depart back to camp. There is a group that will be making their way to this mill. It is our job to eradicate them all. They are the ones who shed your kin's blood, and they would do the same to you as well. The kobolds begin hissing in hatred. You see several of them raise their daggers in the air. Glorious Mondath is on her way with more allies to strengthen our numbers. We will not have long to wait, but for now we must remain within these walls. He looks at you, Swolnald. Two brothers have already joined us, and they bring with them a hostage of the town. More cheers from the group, and a kobold gives you a slap on the back. She is tied up by the well, a perfect piece of bait to lure these foes into a trap. Once we have finished with them, you may have your way with her. A huge eruption of cackles and jeers follow this, and the cultist raises his hand, showing all five fingers. For the Dragon Queen! Oh, who? Sharpen is so fucked if this doesn't work out. Can you stop smiling? It's creeping me out. Have I been able to check the barrels? Yes, and I'll say that you have worked out what's inside them, so you have made your way back to the well to let Sharpen know. Donald, what are you doing now? I'm going to head back outside to let the others know what's happening. The cultist who greeted you calls out to you. Brother, where are you going? We need to stay inside and be ready. I am going to make sure our prisoner is secured to the well and get our other brother in here. I will be back in a moment. Roll me a deception check. Man, I am just the greatest with these rolls tonight. Seriously, no one rolls better than me. I take it I trick this punk ass bitch easy? Indeed you do. He nods to you and returns to the group. Bitching. I head back out to the others and tell them what I heard. You see my character's face go extremely pale. We must make sure we defeat them, guys. I don't know what to think what'll be done to me if we lose. Don't worry, we won't lose. White Guild, did you find out what's in those barrels? Dragon oil. Yeah, it's really dangerous stuff to have, you know, in uh, such high quantities. Uh, they might be planning on using it to blow up the keep, but if we were able to keep this lot inside the mill, we could take them all out in a single hit. I like your thinking. Let's wait until this other group arrives and find a way of getting as many of them inside the mill. Then Sharpen could cast Fireball and then boom, mission accomplished. So let me get this straight. We came here to protect the mill and your plan is to destroy it? Are you fucking retarded? Don't get cute with me, Elf. The plan has changed. We have this cult leader and a shitload of enemies coming this way, even as great as I am. There's no way we can defeat this many enemies on our own. Plus, all this shit about Tiamat is giving me chills, and not the kind that make my nipples ache. If we can take out all these assholes, then when it's over, we can help rebuild the mill, okay? And what about Bama? He's on that roof at the moment. He could get caught in the explosion. He checked out the barrels before we did. He probably knows what's in them, and we'll have worked out we would be looking to set them off. Plus, he can fly now, so fuck him. He'll be fine. The Keep will be sending guards over to help us remember. Maybe we should just try to take on as many as we can for as long as we can first. If it gets out of hand, then sure, we blow it up. But as a last resort... Before any of you can say another word, you hear the sounds of many footsteps and see another large group arrive. Fifteen kobolds, two more hooded figures, and someone in purple robes leading out front walk into the area. She appears to be talking to herself. Damn that Chayan Wrath. Trying to tell me I can't have his personal guard? I say what everyone does. If he wants to keep hostages, then he can do it off his own back. I have far more important uses for our allies than he does. I don't know why he doesn't just kill them and be done with it. She stops about 30 feet from you and looks around. You two, where are your comrades? I walk forward and show my hand. Good evening, Mondath. They await your arrival inside the mill. I know where they are, you deranged simpleton. My orders were very clear for you all to wait for me inside. What the hell do you think you're doing disobeying me? We were securing a prisoner we captured on our way to here and to keep an eye out for this group that is coming. Roll me a deception check. Shit. One of the kobolds in the group makes a strange noise, a bit like a gasp. It's them Mondeth. They are the ones who took out my group into south. 
So much for the plan. God damn it, Bidenator. I rip off my black robes, flexing my massive and majestic muscles, nipples pulsing. You want a piece of the stomp? I, too, rip off my robes and draw my longsword. We won't let you get away with the pain you have caused this night. Prepare to taste my steel. I pull myself out of the rope ties and raise both hands, preparing to cast magic. You made a crucial error in thinking you could take us on. Quack! I stand up on the roof, both hands raised like sharpened. Well, wings, but you get the idea. For fuck's sake, you just gave away your position. Cobalt, kill them all! Roll for initiative! Mondeth takes a sidestep and calls to the others. These insects will fall tonight. You, fetch me the others within the mill. You two, climb the walls and take out that creature on the rooftop. Make this quick. It's your turn, Ben. Is there a way we can get onto that rooftop? It could be easier for us having the height advantage. The water trough could give you a potential leg up to reach the edge of the roof and pull yourself up. You'd need a good strength check to pull it off. I'm going to do that then. Here we go. Your strength is not your greatest trait. However, the fear of being overrun by this many kobolds gives you enough adrenaline to successfully jump from the trough to the edge of the roof, and you manage to pull yourself up. Ah, uh, I'm gonna use my remaining spell slot to cast Bless on Bama, Gormley, and Swole, giving them an additional D4 to add to their attack rolls or saving throws. I call to them all. I have blessed you all with extra power. May it help you in the darkest of moments. Now go and kick the shit out of those kobolds. We may have finally had something useful from your character, but so much for the healing. I uh, got you covered, Don, bro. I have a couple of potions of healing. I'll pass you one on my turn. Speaking of which. Oh, yeah? OK, so I hand a potion over to Swole. Use it wisely. And I, I take a run and attempt to climb on the roof. Give me a strength check. Your years as a fighter has done well to enhance your strength, making it easy for you to scale the building, and you find yourself on top of the roof. Get up here, Swole. One of the cultists runs directly into the mill. You have until the next round before the rest of the enemies come out. The other one pulls out a scimitar from within its robes and charges straight at Swolnald. Bring it on. He waves his scimitar wildly, but you're able to dodge the attack. Your turn, Donald. I'm about to Kyle Rittenhouse these bitches. <laughs> I totally rage the fuck out. And I go for a swing with my great axe. Don't forget your bless. In this case, it's not needed. Your axe makes contact. And in one swing, you cleave the cultist in half. Fuck yeah, that's one for the swole. I take two steps back, so only one of them will reach me. This will make sure I keep the rage train chugging along, but also make sure I don't get overwhelmed by their numbers. As for climbing that wall to get on the roof, that's a weakling's and a coward's way of doing things. I'll leave that to you three. The two kobolds closest to the mill begin making their way over one of which gets as far as the crates. The rest all head for Swole, and only one of them is close enough to reach you with its dagger. It deals five piercing damage after being reduced by half due to your rage ability. I wave my arms and quack loudly as three magic missiles launch from my body, the highest damage seeking the one closest to Swole, and the other two targeting the next. That's two for the duck. I will position myself so I have plenty of distance from any enemies that manage to get on the roof. They already took three of you down. Are you all so weak you can't handle four people? You're meant to be Chienrath's personal guard. You six, get up on that roof and take out those magic users. The rest of you take down that massive oath now. I'm going to cast Firebolt at the one closest to Swole. Wait, go after the ones behind that one. I need him to keep my rage going. You got it, does 14 hit? Indeed. Your firebolt soars through the air and right through the kobold's face, leaving a large hole in the center of its head. Nice. I'll end my turn there. It's going to take those ones some time to get up here, so I have no need to move. I'm going to move to the edge of the roof and prepare a reaction of attack for the moment. One of them gets over the edge. The cultist who ran in earlier now emerges from within the mill, along with the other two. They all run at Swole, brandishing their scimitars. All three attack, each one missing. Swole's rage, enhancing his intimidation, has made it difficult for the cultists to focus their attacks. 
Now it's my turn. I take a swing at the one below me. Swole, move back. There'll be too many of them for you to handle. Disengage and pull back. I can take it. I'm the mighty Swole Nald Stomp. I swing at the cultist. Your mighty axe strikes true, and the cultist goes down after having his head cut clean off. I'm ready for whatever comes next. From within the mill, nine kobolds pour out. They see the other three charging at you and join in the attack. Bring it on. Given the limited spacing, only six kobolds are able to reach you. However, they do all have pack tactics, so they all roll with advantage. Ah, uh, I kind of forgot about that little detail. I'm sure it'll be fine. It would seem the dice gods have blessed you this day, for only half of them were able to hit you. That, with your rage ability of reducing damage, means you only took nine in that wave of attack. Told you I'd be fine. Lucky only three of them hit you. Lucky the DM didn't give them ranged weapons. I considered it when putting this together, but I decided to keep it a little more simple to start with. Now the rest of the kobolds that were ordered to attack you three make their attempts at climbing the mill. The two already at the crates try first, one of which stumbles and falls into the crate on which it stood on. The other manages to grasp the edge of the roof. I use my reaction to attack it. Your blade cuts its hands off and it falls to the ground, cracking its skull on impact. It lays motionless. The others run forward and only one has enough movement as well as being successful at climbing, to get onto the roof. It glares at you with its sharp fangs and attempts to stab you. It succeeds and deals three piercing damage. It cackles in triumph. How low is that thatched roof? I'd say about 10 feet above the ground. Why? I'd like to get to the edge of it and cast Thunder Wave at the group surrounding Swolnald. I believe I can reach six of them without hitting it. You think you can pull that off? We'll see, I'll need these six to make constitution saving throws. I raise my wings in the air and the sound of thunder can be heard. Lightning sparks around me and I shout loudly into the night, quack, as a burst of energy blasts from me towards the six. The cultists succeed and only take half damage. The kobolds, however, fail and take the full force of your thunder wave and are fried on the spot. I think that puts me in the lead for most kills tonight. No one likes a show off unless it's me. This is taking too long. If I have to step in, you will all be sorry to still be alive. I don't like the sound of her. We need to cut these numbers down before she gets involved. I cast Firebolt at the kobold nearest to me. Just like the last, your Firebolt strikes the enemy down in one hit. I'm going to stay where I am for now. Time to strike this kobold down. You swing with such force it causes the kobold's body to fly off the edge. Bitching. Now I run back to about halfway between Bam Bam and Sharpen to give them a bit of protection for when these others make it up here. Very well. And so it falls onto the two remaining cultists who both attack Swole Nald with their scimitar. Neither of which are able to land a hit. No one can take down the mighty Swole Nald Stomp. No one. Boss man, quick question. How do healing potions work in this campaign? You can use an action to drink them and you'll receive max stats or you can use a bonus action and roll, which is 2d4 plus two. I'll risk it. Bonus action for the healing potion, then a swing at the cultist on the right. You regain seven hit points. Nice, and that fucking 20, boys. Let's go. The cultist didn't stand a chance. You cleaved it in half from the top down. I am unstoppable. We shall see. You now have seven kobolds attacking you with advantage. Let us hope that potion was enough. Astonishingly, only three of them hit you, dealing seven damage, their scimitars slashing one after another. I am a fucking god. You need to get out of there, Swole. You won't be able to tank much more at this rate. Throw me another potion, Whitebeard, and I'll finish these fuckers off. Could I do that? You could, however, it would require both of you to succeed. You a strength and Donald a dexterity. Let's do it. I throw the last potion of healing at him. Then both of you make your rolls. Gurmley hurls the bottle into the air. It soars in an arc, straight at Swole, who reaches out and only just manages to grab it, very nearly fumbling it in the process. Nice, thanks, Bidenator. You just went up two points in my good books. Sweet, what am I on now? Two. And now the rest of the kobolds are going to attempt to climb to the roof. The one who fell into the crate clambers out of it and manages to climb up, but has used most of its movement to get out of the crate and then to get up on the roof, so it only moves a couple squares towards Gurmley. 
One more fails so badly that after grabbing the edge, it breaks away in its hand. It falls and breaks its own neck. Three of the kobolds make it up and get pretty close to Gurmley, but the last one rolled a nat 20, so used minimal movement to get up and was able to move right up to the fighter. He slashes at you with a dagger and was not able to hit you due to your impressive agility. Ha! Swole isn't the only one who can dodge an attack. Try dodging several, then we'll talk. I'm going to cast Firebolt at the last remaining cultist. Fuck yes, nat 20, baby. Your Firebolt, much like Sharpens, pierces a hole into the body of the cultist. It collapses on the ground. He reaches out a hand towards Mondath. Please help us, Mondath! She slowly raises a hand, and a warm, glowing light begins to emit from her palm. You can hear a sigh of relief coming from the cultist as he says, Thank you, glorious leader. Worthless. A stream of flames erupts from her palm. It blasts the cultist, engulfing him in fire. His screams rip apart the night sky. When the flames end, all that can be seen is a pile of ash. I have had enough of this charade. Kobolds, disengage and step aside. They are mine. At once, the kobolds take the disengage action and retreat. Those on the rooftop jump over the edge without hesitation. They stand at attention, watching with eager eyes at Mondath, none making a sound. I will make you regret not dying sooner. Keeping her hand raised, you see a glowing white light begin pulsing from it. Donald and Joe, roll me a wisdom saving throw. Oh shit. That's not good. What? What's going on? I think we're about to get fucked in the ass. Oh no. Joe, use the bless roll. It wouldn't make any difference. Joe, your character suddenly finds your body rigged stiff. You can't speak or move. Every fiber in your body is solid still. You have been paralyzed. Donald, you managed to save against Mondath's attack, and so you are not. Even this bitch can't handle the stomp. I run forward and hurl a firebolt at Mondath. Your firebolt flies through the air, and just as it's about to hit her, she flicks it away with her other hand while keeping the first still raised. Fuck, we're so screwed. Calm down, Shapiro. I'll smash that in about two turns. Joe, Gormley is still paralyzed, and so you're unable to do anything this turn other than roll me another wisdom saving throw. You got it. Fuck. Use the bless! Oh yeah, okay. Does 14 what? You feel your body loosen, and you stumble slightly. Guys, I think it's time for plan B. Let me have a swing at her first. If that fails, then you all run. Duck boy, you know what to do. Quack! Let's do this. I run at the pitch and swing with everything I got. Your axe makes contact and she staggers for a moment. Only human compared to me. We got this, guys. Seeing as Swole has indeed done some damage, I too will cast Firebolt at her. Oh, never mind. Your Firebolt flops in the air and lands on the ground. You have no idea who you're up against. We are the cult of the dragon. I am Frula Mondeth, and tonight you will. She suddenly stops in mid-sentence and turns to look behind her. You can all hear a growing noise of roaring calls, many clanking footsteps, and a large horn blowing into the night. Along the river, you can now see a dozen armored guards charging towards you, led by Escobar the Red. Mondeth screams angrily and begins running in the opposite direction as the kobolds advance forward. Can I get an attack of opportunity? She took the disengage action. Sorry, Donald. Oh, well, I'll get another shot at her on my turn. Isn't the fight over? The cavalry has arrived? Not quite. The guards have now entered the area and begin clashing with the kobolds. The sounds of steel ring loudly as the guards attempt to take them out. Escobar runs up to Swole. Good to see you're still alive, lad. I thought we may have been too late. It'll take more than a few kobolds to finish off the mighty swole gnawed stomp and his followers. We're his followers now? Glad to hear it. Now let's be having them. And he charges at the nearest kobold and swings his warhammer into its side. Looks like smooth sailing now, guys. We got this in the bag. All of you, roll me a perception check. What? Sharpen is the only one who spots it. High up in the air and coming straight down is the blue dragon from before. Its jaw opens wide, and it roars. Oh shit! Guys, dragon incoming! Get off the fucking roof! I run off the edge. Same, Same here. here. The dragon lands on top of the mill. It lowers its head and roars again. But not just at you and the guards, but at the kobolds as well. It pounds the roof of the mill and shouts into the night in common. Cease your fighting or I will burn you all. Everybody comes to a complete standstill. The kobolds look at each other, confused. 
One of them attempts to speak with the dragon. Silence! I'm not here to converse, but to deliver! A dark figure emerges from behind the dragon. It leaps into the air and lands in the center of the battlefield. As it slowly stands up, it looks around. A tall blue half-dragon, muscular with piercing red eyes, he holds a long and impressive looking sword, and as he looks around the surroundings, his eyes fall onto each of you. He holds your gaze for a moment before finally resting upon Mondath. He grins, showing razor sharp teeth, and when he speaks, it is calm and dangerous. So, this is what you are using my guards for, Mondath? Wasting resources and lives when I could have taken care of it. You dare to speak to me this way? I do. I told you, Mondaf, do not use my personal guard for your trivial matter. This is something I could have handled, and you ignored me. And now look at the consequences. He begins to walk around the area, observing the fallen dead kobolds that litter the ground. One of the town's guards runs towards him. For greenest! In the blink of an eye, the sound of steel clashing, followed by a grunt, and the guard stood within arm's length of the half-dragon. Motionless, he seemed frozen, then slowly toppled over. The half-dragon was still walking as if nothing had happened. Abandon this foolish notion, Mondaf, and continue with the mission. The next stage has begun. Allow me to clean up your mess. Mondath makes a motion, as if to argue, but the dragon above the mill growls low and she stops herself. Cursing under her breath, she turns on the spot and walks into the darkness. The half-dragon continues to walk around until his eyes find Escobert. He grins again and stops walking. Defenders of Greenest, tonight, has been most successful for the cult of the dragon. You had things that we required. We now have those things. Our business here is concluding, and we shall leave. Rejoice, as you will find peace again in your town. However, there is still one more matter that needs to be dealt with before we finish here tonight. He looks up at the dragon and nods. It reaches around its back and lifts something up and places it in front of its body. You can see that it is in fact three children. A teenage boy and two small girls. They are bound and gagged. We have in our possession Three hostages. They were foolish enough to attack us upon discovering the death of their mother. I am not in the business of slaughtering the young. Therefore, we will give them back to you. On the condition that you agree to a contest of strength Send forth your best and strongest warrior to face me in mortal combat. Nobody else can interfere, or I shall update my business morals. Fight me, and I will allow them freedom. Who among you thinks they have what it takes? I step forward. Can I drink my potion of healing while I do this? Go ahead and roll for it. Nice, nearly max stats. Okay, I step in front of this guy. I am the strongest warrior you will find in this town. I will fight you. Don't do it, Swole. Hmm. Swole. Is that your name? Damn right it is. I am Swole Nold Stomp of the Clan of Stomp and the champion that will kick your ass. 
I know who you are. I've heard your name mentioned several times tonight, and it didn't take much to work this out. We knew there were two leaders causing this mess. One was that purple bitch, and the other was a blue half-dragon. So you're Kyanrath. Very good. Very perceptive of you. Yes, I am indeed Kyanrath. And you are the ones that have been getting in our way this night. Swone old stomp. I have not only heard of you, Swole, but I have witnessed some of your actions. I wonder, does that child remind you of anyone? He points at one of the two small girls. She has long blonde hair, and her face is oddly familiar. I look at the girl. Nope, can't say I do. Does she not have a striking resemblance to a particular woman that was within your company this evening? The one you let die. You couldn't protect a single person of this town, and yet you step forward to accept my challenge. I wonder, is it bravery or stupidity? Motherfucker, he's really pushing my character's buttons, Dungeon Master. I'm going to rush him and ram my axe so far up his ass, I'll be able to use him as a cotton bud for the dragon's ears. You wish to attack him now? Are you sure you want to do this? I have a bad feeling about this, Trump. He's clearly trying to goad you. Maybe we should think about this and plan as a team. I attack! Or just ignore me completely. Good talk. Roll for the attack! You charge forward, your rage fueled by the reminder of the death of Lillian, the mocking from Kianrath, and your pride as a warrior. You raise your axe, and as you bring it down, Sianrath stops it in mid-air with a single hand. It rests in his palm. Was that the best that you can do? No wonder the woman died. I hear she was called Lillian. Tell me, does the shame hurt? Does it burn? Don't say her name. <laughs> Do something about it then. Silence me! While still holding onto your axe with one hand, he uses his other to slash at you with his sword. The blade cuts across your body. The first slash deals four damage, and the second deals a further three. You're making this far too easy for me, Stomp. Have your axe back, and try again. I'll swing at his legs and try to prone the fucker. He seems to have anticipated your moves, for as you swing low, he leaps into the air and lands behind you. Predictable. He counters with another multi-attack, the first slashing at your back, dealing three damage, but the second misses as you manage to dodge it. Quack. You got this lad, dodge and weave, then take the bastard down. Don't let him win swole. You can do it, stop! It seems you have quite the support group, Stomp. Do you need to rely on others to make up for your weakness? Says the guy who needs an army of lizard groupies by his side. For the first time, you can see a glimpse of anger across his face. He throws his sword to the ground, raises his fists, and launches into a barrage of unarmed strikes. The first two miss as you appear to have a handle on it, but the next three all make contact. The first breaking your nose, the second your jaw, and finally the third to the skull. The impact was so severe you hear the skull crack. You stand there, slightly dazed, then sway on the spot and as if in slow motion, fall forward, legs buckling. Kianrath catches you by the throat and pulls you close to his face. It is over. 
He slams you into the ground, face first with such force the rest of you feel the ground rumble. He holds you there with contempt on his face. Stomp! If you are still capable of speech, Stomp, tell me, how does the dirt taste? Is it as delicious as failure or shame? I would not know. He stands up and rests a foot on Swole's back. This was not the challenge I had hoped for. Maybe we will meet again, and then you can try to last longer than a minute. But a deal is a deal. Release the children. Kobolds, we are finished here. The kobolds run in different directions. Kyanrath leaps into the air and lands on the dragon's back, which takes flight leaving the children on the roof. It soars away as the light begins creeping over the town. The guards immediately climb the mill to get the children. Escobar and the rest of you head for Swole, who is lying unconscious, face down. I can't spare the undying. Swole turns himself over and opens his eyes. Swole, you okay, man? Are the kids okay? They don't look hurt, but I'm not sure if they'll ever be okay. We'll do whatever we can for them. If we ever see that fucker again, he's mine. Let us help you next time. I don't know if it's the concussion talking, but I'd appreciate your help, guys. I've been holding that guilt for uh, her. But maybe I should have some allies of my own going forward. What about some friends? Calm it down, elf chick. My head is already aching enough. Where did they go? We'll find out soon enough. We sent scouts. But for now, you all need to rest. Come back to the keep, lads. You start to make your way back to the keep when you hear a cat meow. Oh, I ring the bell. A pure white tabby comes running at you and leaps into your arms. Nice. Mission accomplished. I'm going to keep a firm grip on it in case it tries to go for Bama. Daylight fully breaks into the start of a new day. Although the night has seemed long and difficult, you get the sense that this is only the beginning of your story. And that gentleman will wrap up chapter one. Congratulations. Finally, fuck me, that felt like that took months. It was pretty long, but I get the feeling that if we condensed it all down, it would only be a few hours. Seems legit for D&D. &D. Yeah, that was great fun. I can't wait for what happens next. So, what does happen next? I think this is the part we all get to level up. Right, Dungeon Master? You are indeed correct. You all progress to level two. I understand you've had some discussions and have decided to stick to your current classes. Have you decided on whether you will take the average or will roll for your hit points? We'll need to have a think about that. Can we let you know by next session? Of course. We'll start next session by going over your character sheets. Thank you very much for taking time to play this campaign. I will see you all soon enough. Until next time, gentlemen, good evening. And thank you, viewers, for taking time out of your lives to watch this series of Tyranny of Dragons. I hope you have enjoyed watching it as much as I have been making it. Chapter 2 will begin in 2024. Keep the notification bell on for more updates. If you enjoyed this content, perhaps you could help the channel out by subscribing, liking the videos, and leaving comments. It all helps to please the Dragon Overlords of YouTube and shows that you want to see more of this content. If you want to go that extra mile of support, consider becoming a member of the channel. All proceeds go back into the channel to help keep it going. And if you didn't already know, we have a Discord group you can join and hang out with fellow fans of the channel, content creators, players, and dungeon masters. Come in and say hi. Thank you again. We'll see you soon.